this lecture we will have a very very basic introduction of uh, power system protection why is it needed uh, how is it applied to uh, specific systems uh, some basic types of faults for example shunt faults and series faults their causes and effect on different components and systems so electricity being one of the most important commodity uh, must be available uh, with uh, absolute reliability to consumers which may be industrials commercial or domestic and re the residential users they demand uh, 24 by 7 supply of electricity but mm, no power system can be designed that it would never fail false or inevitable and there are several causes of faults which are out of uh, control of power system designers and protection engineers. So faults will, would always occur. The objective of power system protection is to prevent those faults uh, by proper design of the protection schemes. And if, if a fault occurs, because faults would, would always occur, there, there is always some non-zero probability of occurrence of a specific fault. So faults will, would always occur and uh, the objective of a protection scheme is to isolate the faulty element from the rest of the system to uh, prevent the cascading effect and uh, to minimize the number of, to minimize the geographical area or the number of consumers which are affected by that specific fault. Uh, here, here is a basic protection scheme, how a specific uh, protection uh, transmission line or, or feeder is protected through uh, a simple overcurrent protection scheme. So if you consider a, an, an 11 kV or for example, 33 kV feeder, uh, it is simply protected by a relay and a circuit breaker configuration because these are high voltage lines high voltage in a sense that um, because we not need it with uh, 220 or 400 volts. Uh, and in that case, to disrupt the flow of supply, we simply switch on or switch off a specific uh, to, to continue the supply or to disrupt the supply to a specific load that is drawing almost 10, maximum 10 to 20 amperes of current. But to isolate high voltage systems, there must be a specific procedure to, to switch on or switch off the specific load because if a normal isolator or normal switch is used, then in that case, uh, due to high voltage an arc would develop and uh, there must be some mechanism to quench that arc as soon as possible. So circuit breaker is specifically designed uh, for um, quenching that arc which is produced when it is connected or disconnected uh, for, from the system. And how the circuit breaker is operated, it uh, obtains its signal from a relay. A relay simply monitors different parameters on this feeder or the transmission line or any other system which we are trying to uh, devise protection scheme against. So it uh, has some sensors and in this case, the sensor is a PT potential transformer and a CT current transformer. You must be aware of CTs and PTs in your measurement and instrumentation course. A PT measures this high voltage and uh, steps it down to a level such that relay can uh, measure it and can process it. Similarly, a CT uh, steps down the current to such a value, for example, one ampere or five ampere and that value is directly proportional to the actual line current that is uh, sup being supplied to the load through this feeder. So based on this voltage and this current, a relay uh, calculates a specific threshold uh, to decide if a fault has occurred at any point on this feeder. If there is a specific fault, then it gives a signal to the circuit breaker. A battery is connected here, our DC battery is connected here and this circuit breaker, this relay completes the circuit 
and this battery connect activates circuit coil of circuit breaker, which then eventually uh, opens this specific circuit. So this is how a simple protection scheme operates. Now there, there might be different types of relays depending on the type of fault we are trying to prevent and depending on the specific instrument uh, which we are uh, trying to prevent or detect and prevent the impact of fault. In this case, this is a simple feeder and it might be possible that only uh, current is considered to activate this relay or voltage can also be added with current. For example, if excessive power is being flown or if a fault occurs which impacts the voltage of system at this bus, that can also be considered. So there are various parameters which we can use and process in, in a relay to decide between faulty and healthy conditions of the instrument which we are protecting. Uh, there are different types of faults. There are shunt faults and series faults. A shunt fault is simply a fault with short circuits, creates a short circuit between either two phases or a phase and ground or, or any two conductors due to breakdown of insulation. This insulation, in case of overhead lines, this insulation is provided by the air between two conductors. And if a flashover occurs or if a high voltage surge occurs, then this, uh, then the breakdown of this insulation occurs, and there is a developing of arc between these two uh, conductors. So this is called a shunt fault because it connects any two uh, conductors with the relatively high potential to cause a flow of current between them. Because uh, many of the faults are temporary, in which are simply, for example, a fault due to a flashover of insulator, or for example, a fault uh, due to a temporary foreign object, for example, a tree branch or any other object between conductors of an overhead transmission line. So in that case, there is no need to permanently disconnect this transmission line from the source, uh, because in that case, uh, the supply to load will be disrupted for a relatively longer duration of time. So in that case, uh, a specific uh, process is repeated, which is called recloyer operation, in which case here is a breaker as we already discussed. And this breaker simply disconnects this system and then reconnects after, after a delay of a few seconds. And if this is a temporary fault, for example, due to flashover of insulators, then once the supply is disconnected from the source and then the flashover and its uh, causes are, are temporarily mitigated and the supply can again be uh, continued to the load. But there are a limited number of, for example, if it's a permanent fault, then there is no point in repeating the recloyer operation again and again and only about three recloyer attempts are made in by any circuit breaker. If the fault persists, even after those uh, three circuit, uh, three recloyer attempts, then the system is permanently shut down until this permanent fault is uh, taken care of. So this is insulator flashover because this tower is grounded uh, in case of bad weather or in case of any voltage surge. This line conductor is directly connected to is directly connected to uh, the ground due to the flashover arc, and this arc also is a, some sort of shunt fault because this conductor is directly being connected to ground through this arc. So this arc is modeled through a specific impedance or resistance because somehow current is flowing from this path through air, through this arc, to the ground. So this is modeled by a specific formula called Warrington formula, uh, which is given here that the resistance of a specific arc depends on four specific parameters. It depends on the spacing in feet between any two conductors. It depends on the velocity of air in miles per hour. It depends on the total time for which arc has been developed and it depends on the total uh, fault current that is 
are flowing at the time when fault occurs. So this R can also be modeled and uh, for a specific resistance, we can easily calculate how much current is flowing through this uh, impedance of arc. So arcing faults are most of the time temporary and they can easily be mm, mitigated through reclosures. But if the fault is permanent, for example, if there is a metallic object between uh, this line conductor and ground wire or this line conductor and this uh, uh, pole arm, then that fault uh, cannot be mitigated through reclosure attempts. And uh, there, there are uh, two specific types of shunt faults. One is dead short circuit fault. This is also called metallic or bolted short circuit fault. This is most severe type of fault in which, and in this case, uh, these two conductors, for example, this is phase A conductor, this is phase B conductor. These two conductors, if these two conductors are joined by some foreign object or somehow joined in such a way that the resistance between, the fault resistance between these two is close to zero, then of course all the currency uh, is being bypassed through this fault instead of being supplied to the load. So this is a metallic or bolted short circuit fault. And uh, in, in this case, the heaviest current flows through um, the fault point. And then the other one is partial short circuit fault, which is also, uh, which we have already discussed. This is also called arcing fault or the faults due to flashovers. In this case, the fault resistance is non-zero. And uh, due to this non-zero, <clears throat> non-zero impedance or non-zero resistance, uh, a finite amount of current uh, flows through that arc, and that can be modeled through this resistance formula. There are several causes of shunt faults. Uh, many of them can be taken care of through proper preventive maintenance, but some are of course out of control, for example, temperature and other conditions. So if the conductors uh, it, it might be due to aging of insulators and conductors due to deposition of dust particles on the surface of uh, insulators that causes flashovers to occur. This might be due to temperature because temperature impacts the breakdown strength between any two conductors. Uh, because due to temperature, the temperature and humidity, for example, due to rain, uh, hailstorm or snow, the breakdown strength is affected. So it might be possible that in normal operating condition, these two conductors are operating fine, but in case of severe weather conditions, uh, there might be excessive flashovers that occur between these conductors in ground. This might be due to chemical pollution of conductor surface and insulator surface. This might be due to foreign objects, for example, tree branches that might be touching these two conductors and causing a short circuit between them. And 